Hello everybody. I'd like to tell you how I was a his, uh, witness to history. Between the years 1956 to 1960, I was in the Air Force. I was stationed in Florida most of the time. And surprisingly, on my first uh, hitch in the Air Force, I didn't go overseas. I spent all of that assignment in Florida. I was in West Palm Beach, and I was in Orlando. When I was in Orlando, we used to go down to uh, Kissimmee to the drag races. I can remember, it must have been uh, 57 or 58, I went to uh, the drag race down at uh, Kissimmee, and Don Garlett was there, and now I may be wrong, but I think at that time the world speed record was held by Don Garlett, and it was like uh, 165 miles per hour in a quarter of a mile. So that's how times have changed, and in Kiss Kissimmee, it was so, ro so remote down there, to get something to eat, we would go to a little grocery store and purchase some bread and lunch meat and fix our own uh, snacks while we were at the drag race. And of course that was before Disney World was conceived. There was a missile squadron that uh, it was a training missile squadron at Orlando Air Force Base. And Orlando Air Force Base was eventually turned over to the Navy as a training base. And now that base is completely closed. And it was turned over to some developers who went in there and uh, built some houses. But when I was there, there was a missile training center at that base where they trained for the MACE missile. I was not in the missile squadron. Uh, most of the guys I ran around with were in the missile squadron. But anyway, the nature of my work, uh, this missile squ squadron moved as a complete unit to Germany. And they had tons of paperwork to uh, uh, take care of. All kinds of different things had to be arranged. And a lot of that task fell to me, although I was in a different squadron. I was in a support squadron. But it uh, became my duty to uh, do most of the paperwork for that move. And I worked almost continuously up until the point to where it was a week or so, excuse me, almost dropped my camera. <laughs> a week or so before um, the missile squadron was to move to Germany. And uh, one day I was uh, sitting at my desk and this full bird, colonel, full bird colonel came in to the office and uh, he was looking for me. And I told him, I said, uh, I'm who you're looking for. And he said, uh, we're going to Cape Canaveral to test fire one of our MACE missiles. And he said, we've invited you as a guest because of the work you did for our squadron to go witness the firing of that missile. If you can approve it with your uh, commander. And of course, that was no problem. Uh, my commander was glad to let me go. So I went over with the missile squadron and uh, the MACE missile was launched from uh, uh, it wasn't a truck. It was almost an amphibian. It had uh, huge tires on it. And uh, it was an all-terrain type uh, launch vehicle. And the MACE missile, when, it, when they launched the MACE missile, they had a JATO bottle or a JATO assist bottle. I think that's what they called it. That would fire and get the MACE airborne because the MACE missile had a jet engine internally. In fact, the MACE missile looked just like 
an airplane without a pilot. So anyway, it was set up on a launch stand, a mobile launch stand, uh, almost right down on the beach. And they had a blockhouse that we set atop waiting for the firing. Uh, the missile squadron had a communications truck sitting by the blockhouse that we were sitting on top of. And we could hear the communications with uh, the Cape. And they had told uh, the missile guys that uh, they would have to put their launch on hold because the Glen L. Martin Company, they called it Glen L. Martin then, uh, it became uh, Martin Marietta and then Lockheed Martin, I think. But the Martin Company was launching a Titan missile. Now, this was in 1959, and the research that I have done, that was one of the first Titans fired from Cape Canaveral. And we were sitting on a blockhouse. I don't know how many hundred yards we were from the launch of that Titan. But I've thought about it in the latter years. And if that Titan had have exploded on the pad, more than likely, if it had uh, been in our direction it would have taken us out. So anyway, I got to see the Titan launched and was so close the sound would almost uh, bounce you off of the top of the blockhouse. After the Titan was launched, uh, the guys in the communications truck with, um, with a missile squadron picked up the count on their MACE missile. And uh, when the countdown went to zero, the JADO fired and the missile flew off of the, uh, the vehicle stand that it was uh, sitting on. But what we didn't know at the time, back over Cocoa Beach, there was an F-100 Super Sabre jet circulating around, and he was on the countdown with the MACE missile. And his job was a chase plane of the MACE. But we didn't know that, so when the, when the MACE launched, and it was airborne, and about the time the, the JADO bottle, I think that's what they called them, JADO bottle. I wasn't a missile man. I was an admin person. But when the bottle fell from the MACE missile, the F-100 came over our heads. I don't know how fast he was going. He hadn't broken the, uh, the, the sound barrier. But uh, you can imagine what we almost did in our pants <laughs> because he must have been like 50 feet over our head. In fact, he was going so fast that he had to swerve to the left or he would have passed the missile up. And um, I don't really know that much about that missile course that's old technology I don't even know if that missile was supersonic or not I kind of uh, I just don't know I better not say because I really don't know and uh, I mean nothing I'm telling you is giving away any uh, classified uh, material or anything like that it was just one of those things that uh, I happened to have an opportunity to witness uh, when I was in the Air Force, by, uh, I guess you could say, for doing a good job for a missile squadron. Well, thank you very much for listening. We'll see you. Have a good day. Bye-bye.